Hi everyone, it's Dave here. This video is going to be a little bit different in that it's all going to take place right here at my desk. I'm really sorry about this mess here and I'm hoping that you will try not to judge. Anyway, the point of being here is that this is where my shop workflow usually starts. Never having learned to draw very well, once desktop CAD programs started becoming more accessible, I was all on board. Now, most of my projects are fully 3D modeled before I ever step foot out to the shop. If you do any kind of design work on your computer, whether it's with SketchUp, AutoCAD, VCarve, whatever, keep watching to see how to do it more efficiently on a macro pad. That right there, that's a macro pad. And if you watch to the end, I've got a bonus tip for you. I love using keyboard shortcuts whenever I do any sort of design work. The problem though is that I of course use different programs for different tasks and my brain just isn't big enough to store all the different shortcuts. I picked up this Max Keyboard Macro Pad a couple of years ago and I really loved it for a while. It has 20 programmable keys and I can switch between 5 layers for a total of 100 macro or shortcut keys minus at least one per layer that you need to use for changing layers. The obvious problem though is that I needed to remember what all the keys do on each of the layers. My solution for that was this set of cheat cards. The keypad has user selectable backlighting colors, so I color coded my cheat cards to the backlighting. As you can see though, it starts getting a little messy when you decide to change the key layout. Then last year I came across the Elgato Stream Deck. This is the older classic model that I found as used like new on Amazon for like 90 bucks. At the time of this recording, the newer MK2 model is going for around a buck and a half. Elgato makes decks with fewer or more keys, plus some with knobs and sliders that I guess can be pretty handy for streamers, but that's not for me. This one has 15 keys and as far as I can tell, unlimited layers or profiles as they're called here and folders or submenus. And the best part is these LCD keys that display whatever icons you want. So finding your shortcuts is always super easy. So how do you set up the Stream Deck? Well, the easiest way is if you can find a profile for your app or program in the Elgato Marketplace. Some of this stuff is free, some needs to be purchased. If you're a streamer, you'll find lots of useful stuff here. The rest of us, not so much. I did find this icon pack for Fusion, so that could be helpful to some of you because, as I'll show you later, finding or making useful icons can be the hardest part of setting up your own profiles. If you're a CNCer and you use Vectric VCarve or Aspire, you are in luck. Even though a search in the Elgato Marketplace came up empty, YouTuber Learn Your CNC has a complete video on using the Stream Deck with Vectric software, and even has a set of buttons and icons you can download for free. I'll link his video in the description down below. So let's set up a VCarve profile on my Stream Deck. First, I want a button to launch VCarve and I'll put that in my make create folder. I drag this open function onto a button, then click here to select a file. There's vCarve desktop, and done. Now I go to the Stream Deck files I downloaded from Learn Your CNC. The Stream Deck 2 is pretty much identical to the classic that I have, so I'll double click on that file and you can see that it automatically loads onto my Stream Deck. There are six pages of commands and I can scroll through them using these forward and back buttons. I don't need all these commands, at least not yet, so I'll show you a couple of ways to customize this. One is to add a new page, drag it to the front, then copy and paste the commands I want to have there. But since I do want most of this first page, I'll just duplicate it, then make some changes. Then 
There, that'll do for now. The last thing I need to do is tell Stream Deck to use this profile when I'm in vCarve. Now, when vCarve opens, Stream Deck displays its profile. And when I close vCarve, Stream Deck goes back to my default. So, what about when there's not a ready-made profile available? Not a problem. I built this profile for Top Solid from scratch, and I'll show you how I did it by adding another shortcut key. This function is called Visit Mode, and it's useful for doing project walkthroughs. I use it mostly for finding good perspective views for client approval drawings. I'd like to set up a Stream Deck key to be able to get to it more easily. The first step for setting up a new profile is to compile a list of all of your program's keyboard shortcuts. You should be able to find that in your program settings or documentation. Since creating the button icon is the hardest part of the process, I'm going to start with that. I'll click this drop down button to display the icon I want and then take a screenshot. I'm on a Windows computer, so I hold down my Windows Start key, then press Print Screen. Now I'll open the screenshot in Photoshop and crop it around the icon. Then resize what's left. I found that around 50 pixels square gives me an icon size I like. Then I save it as a PNG and it's ready to go. Setting up the button in Stream Deck is super easy. I'll open the Stream Deck app and select my top solid profile. This Views button in the middle is a folder and I'll put my Visit Mode button in there. I drag a hotkey onto the button I want to use. Click into the hotkey field below, then referring to my keyboard shortcut list, I type Control Number Pad 7. Now on the button picture here, I click the drop down arrow and Set from File, then Locate and select my icon. Edit the button title and done. So, what if you can't find a keyboard shortcut for a tool you want to add to Stream Deck? One thing I'll say for Top Solid is that I haven't found a tool or function yet that couldn't be assigned a keyboard shortcut. But, let's pretend there isn't one for this geometric tolerance function, whatever that is. But, I want to add it to a Stream Deck key. I first need to figure out a keyboard sequence to get to it. The Alt key will get you up to the menu bar in most Windows programs. So I'll type Alt T, then T, 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 right arrow, G. Good, that works. Now I'll program that onto a Stream Deck key. I open my top solid profile and drag a multi action onto a blank key. That opens this window that I'll drag the other actions that I need into. I'll start with a hotkey for the Alt T. Then a text action to type T T T T. Another hotkey for the right arrow. And finally another text for the G. I'll name the key and done. So that shows how anything you can figure out a keyboard sequence for can be easily programmed onto a Stream Deck key. And that truth leads us right into the bonus tip I promised. Okay, so I happen to really like the Windows Weather app. And it's an easy matter to pin it to your start menu or taskbar. But I really prefer to have it on my Stream Deck. The problem is that with most of the built-in Windows apps, there's no .exe file to be found. And that's what you need to be able to use Stream Deck's launch action. So, from my keyboard, I can press the Windows key and just start typing weather. And by golly, look at that. I hit enter and bam. 
As I said, if I can do it from my keyboard, I can do it with the Stream Deck. So back into the Stream Deck app. Drag a multi-action onto a blank key. I start with a hot key and hit the Windows key on my keyboard. Then drag in a text and type in weather. Clicking here will automatically press enter. That should do it. Well, as you can see, the macro seems to stop short of pressing enter. What actually happens is that the macro runs too fast and enter goes by before the Windows Start menu search field is ready for it. So I'll go back to the app, deselect the Press Enter option, drag in another hotkey, and press Enter with that. And now it works. Let's go back and give the button a title and find an icon for it. This is one I found with a Google search and downloaded. So that thing about the macro running too fast just seems to happen every so often when using multi-actions. And not just with the automatic entry. So usually when there's a problem getting a macro key to work, even after I've double checked all the steps, it can be fixed by slowing the macro down a bit with this delay function. Just drag and drop it between the other actions and assign it a delay time. I found 150 milliseconds to usually be plenty, and definitely not something you'd ever notice. Let me know in the comments if you think a Stream Deck will help your design workflow, or if there's another macro pad that you like. If you enjoyed this video and found some useful information, I hope you'll consider giving it a like and subscribing to my channel. Your support really means a lot to me. Cheers!